Hey guys, welcome to Gen C Codes. In this video, we're going to learn about comparison operators. Okay, so let's get to it. As the name suggests, comparison operators compare two values and evaluate it down to one Boolean value. If you click on the link in the description, you'll see that there is a presentation. In it, I've put an image of all the comparison operators along with what each of them do. Now before I actually tell you about each of them, it's important to note that in Java, these operators cannot be used to compare two string values. Alright, so the first one that we have is equal to, right? But first, actually, I'm going to go ahead and create two variables. I'm going to say integer 1, which is, let's say, 20, and integer 2, which, let's say, is 7, right? Now, the equal to sign would be written this way. So I'd say integer 1 is equal to um, integer 2, or I could say um, 20 is equal to 7. Let's make that a comment. Right. So, as you can see over here, I've used two equal to signs, whereas over here, there's only one. Now, I'll explain to you exactly what's going on, right? If we used the same equal to sign over here, the computer, the program, actually wouldn't understand what you're saying. What it would assume is that you're actually assigning a value to integer 1, and you're saying that integer 1 is equal to the value of integer 2. Right? You're not actually comparing them. The single equal to sign in Java means that you are assigning a very uh, you're assigning a value to a variable. A single equal to sign is an assignment operator, whereas the double equal to sign, so two of them, is actually a comparison operator. If you just put a single equal to sign, Java will actually think that you were assigning a value. Right? So it's important to never confuse those two up and to always remember that a double equal to sign is for comparisons only, while the single equal to signs is for assigning a value to a variable. All right? Okay, now the next one that we have is not equal to. So I can say integer 1 is not equal to integer 2, or I could say 20 is not equal to 7. Right, so over here I would get, so if it's integer 1 is not equal to integer 2, of course I would get true. Why? Because 20 is definitely not equal to 7. Over here though, where it says integer 1 is equal to integer 2, I would get false because again 20 is not equal to 7. Right, so here the output would be false whereas here it would be true. All right. Now, the next one that we have is lesser than, and we also have greater than. So I could say integer 1 is less than integer 2, or 20 is less than 7, right? And again, over here, I would get false, because 20 is certainly not less than 7. But if I said integer 1 is greater than integer 2, or 20 is greater than 7, I would get true because 20 is greater than 7. Now the last two that we have are equal, uh, are less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So this would just simply be, you just add an equal to sign over here, right? And now again, for the time being, it would technically be the same. This would evaluate down to true and this would give you false, right? But let's say I kind of switch it around, right? Let's say I was saying over here 5 is less than or equal to 7. This would give me true and actually let's say 5 is less than or equal to 5. This would also be true, right? But if I had 5 is lesser than 5, this would give me false, right? So that's kind of the difference and how you would use these operators. It's almost the same way that you would use them in math and how you usually use them. All right, so now let's move on to the next concept. So remember how I said that you can't use these operators to compare string values? Well, here's why. Say we have two string type variables, right? So let's go ahead and define them. So let's say string, let's say string, string A, and let's say that's equal to string A, and we have string B, which is equal to 
string b, right? And then let's assume that we said something like string a is equal to string b, right? So what the program is going to do when we say string a is equal to string b in this sense is that it's going to check if each of these strings are stored in the same place in your computer's memory. But that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to compare these two values. So we want to see if these two strings have the same characters. So to properly compare two strings for equality, we use the string class equals method, which is string a dot equals, and then we could have string b in parentheses, right? So here it would compare them and this would actually evaluate to false, of course, because here it's string A versus here it's string B, so they don't have the same characters. But let's say I change that to string A, then that would give me true because it has the same characters, right? So this method basically returns the Boolean true if string A and string B are the same length, have the same characters, and each character in one string is identical to the corresponding character in the other. But the comparison is case sensitive. So if, let's say, it was like this, it would still give me false because it's case sensitive and now the characters are not the same. But let's say you wanted to ignore the case while comparing. What you can do is you can say string a dot equals and you can say ignore case and then string b, right? And in this case, because it's ignoring the case, it would give me true. All right, so now let's move on and actually talk about something called a logic operator. If you've seen my Python tutorials, you'll notice that Boolean operators are very similar to these logic operators. Right, so there are actually two of these, and and or. Right, so this is called a truth table. It tells you every possible result of the Boolean operator. The AND operator evaluates to true only if both Boolean values are true. Otherwise, it is false. On the other hand, the OR operator evaluates an expression to true if either of the two values are true. If both values are false, it evaluates to false. It may be slightly challenging to understand the significance at the moment, but as we go further, there will hopefully be some more clarity. Anyway, the last thing we're going to do with these operators is we're going to mix Boolean operators with comparison ones. So let's look at a few examples, right? So the first one is where I could say integer a is greater than 5, and I could possibly say integer b is greater than 4, right? And so what this is going to do is it's going to look at both sides. So it's going to say, is integer a greater than 5? Yes, it is. And is integer b greater than 4? Yes, it is. So both of these expressions evaluate to true. So what I eventually get is true and true, which, as we saw in the true table, evaluates down to true. So the um, return value for this, the return Boolean value for this, would be true. All right. So now the next one that we have, uh, another example that we could look at is integer a is, let's say, greater than 8, and we could say or integer b is greater than 8, right? Now, in this case, integer a, which is 20, is definitely greater than 8, but integer b is not greater than 8. 7 is not greater than 8. So this part would evaluate to true, but this part would evaluate to false. Right? But because this is the OR operator, operator, as we saw in the truth table, when it's OR, it, either of them has to be true for the return Boolean value to be true. So in this case, this, one, this expression is true, so this would be true or false. So because one of them is true, this entire thing, this entire expression, would evaluate down to true. All right. Now let's look at one last one, which is a bit more complicated, but... Let's try it out. So let's say integer a is greater than 5, or we could say integer b is greater than 5, and we could say integer a
All right. So what this is going to do is it's first going to look at this and part because that's usually given more importance. Like when we were talking about precedence, even when it comes to these um, comparison operators in terms of the Boolean ones or the logic operator, sorry, when it comes to the logic operators, there is a certain precedence that it follows. It will look at your and operator first and then it'll look at your or operator. So in this case, uh, where it says integer b is greater than 5, first it will evaluate this part and this part, right? So the first part that we have is integer b is greater than 5. And this would be, of course, true, right? Because 7 is most definitely greater than 5. Then the next part, which is integer a plus integer b is equal to 26. However, this would evaluate to false. Why? Because 20 plus 6, uh, sorry, 20 plus 7 gives you 27, not 26. So this would be false, while this would be true. So now what do you get? You get true and false, which evaluates to false. So this entire part is false, right? Now let's look at this part. It's integer a is greater than 5. Is integer a greater than 5? Yes, it is. 20 is most definitely greater than 5. So this would be true. Well, this entire part would be false. So it would be true or false. Now in this case, because it's true or false, it would give me true. The return Boolean value would be true. However, I can add parentheses to override certain methods if I want. For example, I can put parentheses over here maybe, right? And I can say that perform this or operation first and then do the and operator. Right? So what this would give me is, so first of all, we as we establish, this is true, and this is also true. So this part would equal to true. But as we figured, integer a plus integer b does not equal to 26, so this part is false. So this would give me true, and this would give me false. It would be true and false. In this case, it would give me false, because when you have the truth table again, true and false gives you false. Okay? So... That's it about it for this video. In the next one, we'll learn about decisions and the if statement, which will allow us to create more complex projects. Happy coding!